everybody welcome back to Kato um, part three we're gonna continue on there are slow news days and then there are dead news days well he's hanging around underneath the bridge what he's what's he waiting for besides a cat hmm I need to get something published today or my boss will get on my case might as well have a stroll and see if I can at least find something worth writing about the city beautifully lit in the dark as I find my way down to the towpath is probably one of the prettiest spots around here. Another advantage it has going for it is the fact that for some arcane reason almost nobody ever goes there, rendering it a quiet place for thoughts to be had. Hang on a moment. What's that sound? My pondering is interrupted by aggressively growling and a tremendous noise under the bridge. My curiosity is getting the better of me, and I solemnly walk over to check the source of the racket. <laughs> oh, the cat is back. In the glow of the lamplight, there's a group of cats staring at each other, hissing and swatting their thought paws. Oh, the, the gangster cats are out. Four of them seem to be working together against a somewhat larger, rougher-looking one. Street thugs. <laughs> Could it be the same one from the other day? It looks like it, and it appears to be in trouble. Let them resolve it amongst themselves. Try to interrupt the fight. Pour water over them. Okay, let's interrupt the fight. Four against one? No. Uncool. I can't let them fight, so I run up shouting, flailing my arms and causing a general stir, hoping to end the tussle. Like most readers of the paper, they couldn't care less about my attempt and roll around in a ball of claws and hissing anger. I have nothing to break up the fight with. Oh, maybe I should have poured water on them. I don't care in the slightest about my opinion on the whole fighting business, and putting a hand in there would likely end in roughly the same manner as shoving in two... <laughs> a wood chipper, <laughs> you think? I can't do much better than look on helplessly as they fight it out. In the end, it's the lone cat that comes out on top and chases away the raps rapscallions with a visibly weary, its chest heaving with a ragged breathing. Ah, Okay, four against one, those street thug cats. I walk closer wanting to help it, but it gives me one quick look of disappointment that causes me to stop dead in my tracks. You couldn't help me. I guess that it was none too pleased about my interruption. Well, maybe he's the granddaddy gangsta cat. But clearly, this cat is a cut above most and it deserves some form of distinction. King gangsta cat. He's the man. Well, gang King Gangsta Cat, you're clearly made of sterner stuff than most. Mind sharing your secret? King Gangsta Cat starts walking along the water with an air of authority, and I tag along at a respective distance. It stops, but this time it's not facing the canal. It looks into the corner of the wall. Maybe there is where it spends the night. While certainly stuffed with trash, there doesn't appear to be much in the way of food. Clean up the garbage, offer food. I still have a few treats left, so I fish them out of my pocket and crouch down, offering them from my hand. Oh, yeah. Gangsta cat who just kicked out, kicked four other cats' butts, and you're just going to feed it out of your hand? Okay. King Gangsta Cat looks at me with a spark of suspicious, glinting in the eye, not making any move to approach. I throw a treat between us in case it just doesn't want to get close to me. Look at the cat. <laughs> it walks up to the treat with a scowling expression and swats it dismissively into the water below. Oh, cat with an attitude. Note to self, King Gangsta Cat really doesn't like cat treats. Skip treats over the water. Let's see. No, we may need the treats for the other ones. Touch the cat. Let's see what happens. Okay. Turns out the worst thing that could happen is a cat peeve to the highest degree. 
Then again, it was just involved in a bit of a scuffle, so I suppose it was a fairly dumb idea to intrude on its personal space. Still visibly displeased, it makes its way into the shadow beneath the bridge, and I know better than to bother it further. Smart. While certainly not the smoothest of friendship, I get the feeling that King Gangsta Cat is at least somewhat less indifferent towards me. King Gangsta Cat and I have to part ways for now, but I'm looking forward to meeting it again. Once back at work, inspiration hits me. I could always write a little piece about the issue of abandoned cats around the city. There you go. After all I noticed before, so bringing it to a light might result in some good. Turning home in the morning, I met with a surprise. I looked through my pockets for my keys, only to find none. I must have dropped them somewhere. With resignation, I knocked steadily on the door. A short while later, Roselle opens it with a surprised look on her face. She looks tired. I'm not sure if I woke her up or not, however. I dropped my keys. Oh, I have to go looking for them after I've had time to sleep. Are you going anywhere? No, not really. With that, we separate into our respective rooms. Go to sleep. I go to the bakery during the afternoon this time around, as the bakery won't be open in the weekend due to the move. So this will be the last time I go to this alley. During the walk, I'm sure to keep my eyes peeled in case I dropped my keys here, but I'm fairly sure I didn't. I enter the, the bakery and I'm almost feeling a little nostalgic as I look around. It won't change my routines that much to go to the new place, but I'm a little worried about Chubbs. I ask the owner about it when she hands me my bread. Will you bring the cat along with you to your new place? There is no good place for it to stay at the new bakery, and we can't let it inside. Isn't there anyone that can take it home then? We have tried that, but it got really angry and anxious when we tried to carry it away. It really likes it with us, but when push comes to shove, we'll have no choice but to force it to. I'm sure it'll work out somehow. Have you seen a pair of keys, by the way? I've dropped them somewhere. I haven't, but I'm sure to be on the lookout. The owner smiles reassuringly and continues on with work. I leave the bakery feeling ill at ease. Aww, Chubbs isn't looking too happy. I walk up to Chubbs and I notice that it looks a little bit uneasy, but cheers up when some when it sees me. Oh yeah, you got fat cat treats. The cat must know that something's going on. I should at least try to comfort it some before I go. Cheer it up with play, pet it, a gentle, pet it gently for a while. There you go. Cuddles are the best cure for anxiety. I sit down next to it. I sit down next to its little bed and reach out my hand to caress its head. Look, he just smiles out of it. Chubbs closes his eyes and purring, and we sit like that for a while. We can't leave Chubbs without anyone caring for it. It feels weird to think of the cat being anywhere else, but here in the back alley, this is its home. I keep a close eye on the cat. It's looking much happier after some cuddling. A thought starts to play in my mind. Uh-oh. What if I could take Chubbs home with me? Hmm. Chubbs seems like a cat that would like most people. Sure, that might be a presumption, but I feel like we have a little bit of a special bond. 
gotten better with cats, I think, and I know Roselle owned cats in the past, so we would be able to care for it. Our apartment is big enough, and my income isn't too bad. It could be doable. No, it's entirely doable. Let's try it out. It will depend on if Chubbs likes me or the bakery more entirely. Chubbs inches closer to my hand and snuggle close to it. I stroke it gently with my free hand. Oh, look at Chubbs. Give it cat treats, call bluff, spoil it with further cuddles. Hmm. Let's see. Let's call bluff. Yes, big sad eyes. This ain't my first rodeo with cute animals. <laughs> you may be a persuasive cat who knows what it wants and how to get it, but nope, not this time. I'm sure Chubbs is noticing the change, is indeed likely somewhat spooked by it, but this right here, I'm not buying. Okay, you've had your fun. You know you're a cat. You'll get a pat or two without the act. <laughs> Chubbs looks at me again, and here we go. Big sad eyes locking into me, demanding attention. I ignore it and rest my chin on my hand. The eyes glitter and sparkle, and a paw reaches out to touch me. I channel my inner stone face and don't move a muscle. Chubb stands up and strokes its face against mine. Look at the smile on that cat. Ah, oh, Chubbs is cute. I wait until I see its eyes starting to return to normal, from watery puppy to eyes to the regular lazy cat ones. <laughs> this fat cat's so funny. That's the Chubbs I know. I pet it on the head as a reward, like I promised to. I'd like to test the waters a bit to see if Chubbs would be interested in following me home. Walk away and call for it to follow. Just pick it up, carry it home in its bed. Walk away and call for it to follow. Would Chubbs voluntarily follow me out of this alley if I just called for it? Could hardly hurt to try. I give the cat a last pet on its head and then walk away, not stopping before I reach the next street. Not that far of a distance, really, but it can be for a small cat. I make eye contact with Chubbs that eyes me curiously. Without breaking it, I crouch down and reach out with my hand. Come here, Chubbs! I click my tongue and the cat's ears respond, homing in on the sound. I call again, and after some hesitation, it makes its way down from its bed. It trots lazily over to me, swaying with every step. I offer my hand for pets, and before accepting it, Chubbs glares at me, resentful for, of me for making it walk all the way here. <laughs> but still, it did it, and I'm very proud of it. I snuggle it properly, and then comes the real test. I place my hands around Chubb's body and pick the cat up. Gosh, it's heavy. <laughs> it's a fat cat. What do you expect? I shuffle it around so I have a good hold around it, and the cat strokes its face against mine. Seems like Chubb's passed the test, or maybe it was that I did. I'll have to tell the owner and the bakers that I'll take Chubb's with me. I hesitate at the door, but I don't want to drop the cat now, so I walk in with it in my arms. The owner will have to excuse me, but it's a special ex occasion. The owner's eyes open in surprise when she sees us. Well, would you look at that? Seems like our little charmer has been charmed itself. It seems like it doesn't mind coming with me if that's fine with you. Of course. We couldn't be happier that it finds a proper home. Knowing it you makes it feel even better. Does Roselle know about this? No, I'm just hoping she won't mind. The owner lets out a huge laugh. I can't imagine she ever would. Say hello from me. I will. And I'll keep you all updated on Chubbs. 
That's what I call it, by the way. Chubbs? It's a suiting name. Chubbs and I bid our farewell to the old bakery and the alley. Ah! I said I never found my keys, so they must be down by the river. First, however, I must break the news to Roselle. Uh-oh. Now this is gonna go. Message her beforehand. Surprise her. I don't know. She used to like cats, but... I don't know. I'm gonna message her beforehand in case she says don't don't come home. I don't want to cause her a heart attack, so it's best I warn her. You know that the bakers are moving out. They were looking for someone to take Chubbs in, and I might have agreed to it. I'm coming home with it right now. I checked the phone a few times, and it finally gets marked as red. No reply. Uh-oh. The door home is unlocked, and I kick off my shoes before heading for Roselle's room. I reach for the handle, but is beaten to it as Roselle opens the door for me, letting me in. How is Chubbs? Fine, I think. Didn't complain at all the entire way here? Didn't reply, so I don't know yet. Is it fine for with you to let Chubbs live with us? Of course. Can't let it stay out on the street. But we'll have to get it a few things. Yeah, I was thinking of heading out and grab the necessities now. You'll need to buy diet food, a litter box, unscented litter. You know what? I can write you a list. That would be great. Could you help Chubbs make it self at home and I'll go get it now? Sure. I hand her the cat and she burrows her face in its fur, taking in the moment. Chubbs looks quite comfortable, too. They probably want some time to themselves, so I head out. After a few moments, I receive a very long list of things I'll have to find. I manage to find nearly all of them and drop them off at home before heading down to the canal to look for my keys. I can't stay without them for much longer. Take care, have fun, and as always, be safe out there.